Right. Does that now fill the screen, Martin? Yep. Perfect. Right. So off we go. Thanks very much, Kate. So as I said, we're, we're looking at the Exile strategy update to guide our planning for 2021. Uh, obviously, all this is in the context of uncertainty around the COVID situation. So please do take that into account. Uh, Exile strategy circles say that the feedback they've had shows the need for more collective focus for our actions, which implies a need to align on shared actions and coordinate actions around similar targets and dates so that we can have, in their words, a bolder impact. So this update is focused on the actions and the outcomes we want, not the overall XR strategy, which is a, a broader thing, not just focused on actions. Next slide, please. So these are the key goals of the, that XR have for our actions for this year. Um, they call them successfully steer the narrative, which I interpret to mean through their explanation, uh, better to connect better with the media, to get our message across better to the media and also through the media. Secondly, they say to platform this climate and ecological emergency bill and also citizens' assemblies. In other words, to make these a focus of XR messaging and actions and th the messaging through the actions. Thirdly, they say, call it follow the money. We've heard about that money rebellion. So there's a focus on, as it says here, the vast amounts of money spent on defense and destruction while pen pennies are spent on that, well, that's got both by government and by corporations, I guess, on climate. Uh, just as a note here that I've added that we could do with perhaps a couple of people focusing on finding this information for us and feeding it through to us in ways that we can digest more easily. I think we may have a couple of people willing to do that already, actually. Uh, the fourth one here, rattle the media. So following up on the print works action from the last rebellion, to find further ways to uh, challenge the media on the way that they, what they communicate and the way they communicate the, emergen the urgency or otherwise of the climate and ecological emergency and general truth telling and the way that they inform the public. But this is a key aspect. Uh, we'll come back to the messaging for the public uh, in another slide. Um, fifthly, mobilize people in large numbers they're looking for large numbers towards uh especially towards the cop 26 summit for follow-up to the paris climate summit which is in due to be in glasgow i think in november um and also focused mass actions in between now and then they were talking about having uh i a million people trained to do nonviolent direct action, for example, I think very ambitious target, but that's the kind of, when they mobilize large numbers of people, that's, that's the kind of ambition that they're looking at. Uh, and then the last one there, open up space for the impossible, to invite the public to imagine a better tomorrow. And I think that means um, through our actions, not just being, for example, disruptive, but trying to create something that demonstrates in some way perhaps a possible positive alternative future uh, so I think a bit like uh, in the April rebellion last year Waterloo Bridge and Marble Arch there was in a very small way a kind of uh, a vision of a, a different kind of society and a different kind of uh, way that we could live on on God's earth so that's uh, I think how I would explain that one uh, we can move on to the next slide Kate and through all this, I think this is the kind of the headline thing, really, for all this. The key message that should come through all of this, through all our actions and all our uh, messaging, all our press releases, um, all our signs and placards, in a sense, whatever way we're comp communicating, is this gov government failure. And this is both on the level of policies, things like whether it's HS2, 
and road building or public transport or energy or failure to insulate buildings, etc. So these are policies, whether it's those things or whether it is on the level of actual government structures, that it's a failure in the way that parliament works, that elections work, that political parties work. That all these things, for example, uh, are examples of ways that the structure of government and the structure of our politics is not able to work in the way it's needed. It's not able to hold government to account or do what needs to be done, that the system itself is dysfunctional. It's not able to get done what needs to be done. It's not able to expose um, what's being done wrong or what's not being done. Uh, next slide. Thanks, Kate. Bear with me, Martin. My system is refusing to play. There you go. So as you can see, these slides are getting a bit more detailed. We get into the, 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 the meat of the matter, and you could say. Uh, so within this headline messaging of government failure, uh, they break it down into more, more sections. So first of all, follow the money. Uh, I guess this relates to what I mentioned earlier, hopefully most of us have heard of, is the money rebellion. Um, and within that, there's, again, there's three areas. So the first of all, you could say is how government spends its own money, or our money for that matter how government spends money, whether it's on fossil fuels, um, defense as in the military, uh, whether it's destroying nature, uh, but worth in comparison to spending very little on, uh, for example, you know, re renewable energy, protecting nature, etc. Uh, to how government spends its money. Secondly, uh, the influence of big money on government and how that distorts their priorities in a non-democratic way, for example. Uh, big money, big business has that influence on government. We know that. And thirdly, the failure of government to regulate money, regulate the financial industry, to regulate uh, the way money flows around the world these days in vast quantities. Uh, and this country being one of the great hubs of that in the world. Uh, so that's follow the money. So the second one, democracy in crisis. So again, this idea that the democratic system itself is not working. Um, so uh, they're breaking that down again to three areas within that. So a lack of, first of all, that there is a lack of systems or accountability to the people that actually work. Um, secondly, that, that failure means that often policies and projects go ahead with no, with no pu public backing, for example, HS2. And thirdly, um, as part of this democratic crisis, that the, the corporate media, the mass media owned by big companies, as was ex exposed in the press action, um, have a powerful influence uh, on government policy by, by misinforming the public. And people don't get good and accurate information. And thirdly, uh, this area they call stop the harm. So uh, because of the failures in the previous two areas, I think you would say that government actual policies um, continue to cause harm. They on the one hand cause harm in the UK and abroad, for example, still funding uh, fossil fuel projects and providing subsidies to fossil fuel projects, for example, building roads and expanding airports and things. And secondly, fail to protect from harm. Um, I mean, to my mind comes first of all, for example, that there's a completely inadequate amount in the United Nations Adaptation Fund for the Global South. Thanks, Kate. So this is another way of, of looking at breaking down um, that uh, those areas of government failure. And the, the key thing I take from this slide, actually, they, they've given various examples of kind of actions that could, what, where you could target the Bank of England, uh, lobbyists, uh, obviously COP26 and others there. Um, so the, the, that, that's worth 
exploring further, I think, when we're trying to plan actions, it's worth coming back to this slide, I think. But I think one of the key things I like to highlight on this slide is at the top, it says, whatever the action, the public are our target audience. So even if we're, for example, doing an action at the Bank of England, uh, or even at uh, uh, Department of Transport, or wherever, wherever we're doing it, HS2, that actually the public are the target audience. It's not necessarily in the first place the company or the local people working in a particular office, although they are part of the public, obviously, but that the public are the tar target audience. And if you can design actions that, um, as it says in the bottom uh, right-hand corner there, if we can design actions that cover all three areas of failure, these will be the strongest actions. And it is highlighting it looks like it's highlighting um, sort of oil companies there, but um, that's obviously one example area they're highlighting. So um, move next slide, uh, please, Kate. So this is just again a thing about how how to help us a way to help us design actions. So some actions are purely disruptive, can be purely disruptive. For example, uh, blocking an entrance to a HS2 site, for example, or oil refinery or something like that could be a purely disruptive thing. Um, some are purely creative. Uh, so, for example, the recent subvertising uh, National Poster campaign that we at Christian Climate Action did uh, during Advent. But some can be both of those. So I think a good example, going back to that Waterloo Bridge at the April Rebellion last year, where we're obviously disrupted by blocking the road, but also creative. Um, and all those locations were by, you know, creating an image of some, in a very small way, some kind of alternative possible future society. So things that combine both the creative and the disruptive are the strongest ones. And I've added the comment in the bottom corner there that in terms of using the, the creative dimension, I think us as Christians, we can use particularly our Christian imagery, which although we live in a post-Christian society still has resonance with many people, uh, obviously with other Christians who are and churches who are often our target audience. So we can use storylines that use Christian narrative. We can use our symbols and our rituals like the Eucharist, for example. Um, it's good to have something, I think, that not only challenges, but also inspires. And it's a part, I think it's part of the creative, the disruptive challenges, the creative can inspire people. And as, it, as they said, they, as this pr presentation said earlier, that opens up space for the impossible by inviting people to imagine a different future. Thanks, Kate. Um, so, yeah, what I want to highlight on this slide, uh, this XR uh, strategy document included this this diagram. I like diagrams; that's um, part of me. Um, but anyway, so originally we XR focused on almost purely on um, mass actions with a low, with a medium level of uh, risk of arrest, so the occupying road space in large numbers, so mass civil disobedience. Um, what XR is suggesting now is that it, we would try and move to a slightly different focus, not forget the mass civil disobedience, but also move to having lower risk in, a, in effectively no risk actions like marches, for example, where you can get more people to participate in order to broad, build broader support for our movement and also to go for higher, slightly higher risk actions, at least slightly or more higher risk actions that require less people but can cause a similar amount of, for example, disruption. So they give the example of um, using lock-on tubes in blocking, as I said, maybe an entrance to a fossil fuel site, uh, et cetera, as many people have done over the years. Um, and as they say, actions are good in themselves, but also an important part of mobilizing that when people become involved in something, then we build our movement and that, then has an impact on, as they, if we use their phrase, the pillars of power. Um, so that's something we always need to think about in our actions that we're trying to involve more people in our movement and get more support for our movement through participation as well as through the messaging. 
Um, so this is a very brief summary of a longer document. It's not that that long, to be honest with you, uh, but it, it would be like two or three or about three or four times as long as like, this summary. And you can find it um, on their website at this address. Um, just Google U XR UK Action Strategy Update 2021 and you'll find that. So I think the next, I think that's over to you now, Kate, I think. It is indeed. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Martin. And um, so what Martin and I um, then did after um, looking at this and trying to provide some sort of a summary for it was to say, OK, so how do we shape this um, within a CCA perspective? Which bits can we align with? Um, which bits um, speak more to our Christian agenda. And clearly we need to do this because we're only a very small subset of XR as a whole, and we're gonna to have to pick our battles um, and decide where we can um, put the most, have, have the most input um, and input most effectively. So um, a number of observations. I mean, obviously the focus on collective shared action is, is very welcome. Um, the, because of the, the critical mass element of that. And the key message of highlighting government failure um, is one that will speak very clearly to people. And one of the things that we were reflecting was that we really do have a perfect case study in the COVID crisis. I mean, this is the biggest large scale crisis that any of us have experienced, um, you know, since, since World War II and the government's handling of that, both in its capacity to stop harm, its ability to engage in democratic processes, all of these things have been found to be wanting um, and uh, reflecting their failure in the COVID crisis is something again that the public would certainly identify with. But what we're going to do um, now is move into focus groups, um, breakout groups, and one of the things um, that we're going to be asking you to think about in that focus group is how we can craft a a very specifically Christian narrative from this plan. Uh, and by way of example, what I mean by that is if you think of some of the things that are included in this plan, you can begin to see how they have a very strong resonance with our values and our message as Christians. So this idea of truth telling, rattling the media because they're not telling the truth, exposing government failure, telling the truth about what our government is doing and, and, uh, or what they're not doing. Um, you know, the whole concept of the truth will set you free um, is, is one that uh, speaks very strongly to our uh, beliefs and values as Christians. Confronting exploitation and greed that cause harm, that's the whole follow the money um, angle um, that we're in this situation because of the greed of a, a relatively small number of people have tied us all into a network from which we now find it extremely difficult to extricate ourselves but also the, the really important aspect of bringing hope and finding solutions that are redemptive of the situation. Um, and hence, backing the CEE bill, um, there's been some discussion about the extent to which XR and CCA should organisationally back the CEE bill because, um, because people asso associating it with direct action organisations may therefore then feel that this bill is, is radical and not something they want to support. But even if we can't support it or choose not to support it in an organisational sense, we can support it by encouraging individual members within us um, to back it and, and get them to spread that message out further. And then obviously uh, COP26 is supposed to be an opportunity for government to come together to find solutions and we need to be encouraging them to do that. The other thing that we want um, to think about in the breakout groups is um, the fact that this is such a fluid year. Um, as Martin said, um, you know, we're not quite sure how things are going to roll out. We know that the vaccine um, obviously is being rolled out, um, but the timescales on that are long. We don't know at what stage we're going to come out of lockdown. So it's very difficult to know um, exactly when and how things are, are going to happen. And the um, exercise action strategy was clearly written, if you read it, um, a little way before Christmas when the second wave of COVID began to bite. So um, it doesn't really reflect um, 
the, the current situation in, 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 in quite the way you might expect. But there are things that we definitely do know. Um, we know that the CE bill is now going to be debated on the 26th of March, a couple of weeks later than was originally thought, and that the rebellion of one, um, which has been talked about a little bit amongst CAA members, um, is still planned for the 27th of March. And that is an action that involves people um, basically sitting in the street uh, individually. So it's a socially distanced action. So should be able to go ahead, regardless of what situation we're in uh, regarding COVID. And it's not entirely unreasonable um, to hope that COP might go ahead as planned in November and that things we might be in a, in a different place by then. But what we've got to think about is if it is not possible to have any kind of mass action or mass gathering in between because of COVID, what approach can we take, what strategy can we take to keep us energised and motivated and getting the message out there that the climate emergency still exists and it's getting more urgent by the minute.